the farm up. Welcome. This is the podcast of Wake the Farm Up, Maintaining Ground. And I am your host, Andy, the mother farming elf. In this podcast, we're going to experiment. This is the first season. We've been talking with old friends. We've talked with some new friends. And we've talked with a whole variety of people who are inspiring, intriguing, and have their own take on how the world is and what they've been offering, incredible stories. We're going to have a good time at the big part here. We're making this serious, and I hope it's seriously fun. All right, here we go. (laughs) Yeah, welcome everybody to another freaking farming episode. We're chilling with Ryan yep. Doe. Yep, yep, yep. Let's hear it, everybody. Doe. We got Ryan Doe. What's up, Andy? Yep. Having a good time. Here we go. It's great. Tomorrow. We recordings and we're tomorrow. Like we're we're not going to tomorrow. We're going on a boat. Today. So there's an actual, like, Here we go. This is real. Here, like, me and you in front of this massive audience. Yeah, exactly, man. Thank you all for being here. This is great. Being here with Andy and you guys, just being able to talk. So, some of you may know Ryan, but there's who knows how many listeners listen to this. That, you know, I can't expect everybody to know this guy quite yet, but after this, you're going to want to. This is the guy that you want to be friends with, especially after you get to know him. I mean, he's incredible. He's loving and caring and nurturing in so many freaking ways that you can just see it when you walk around and see the plants that are growing around him and the way that people are that are working with the plants around him. So tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, like your little quick bio and then we'll get into some more fun questions here, right? Okay. Um, well, I live in Maro Row. Row, Row. We got a farm to table cafe called Ohio OO. The name is Fresh Tomorrow. Three words. Fresh, pause, two, T O. Last word, tomorrow, where we live. Uh, so we're doing a little farm tip cafe. We're open on the weekends. Uh, and we have a 10 acre field that we're doing no spray vegetables and berries and some. Uh, permaculture in the woods behind our house great thank you um so before that i i did uh corporate analytics and did like financials for like banks and private equity firms and i was like an underwriter so i'm way happier now (laughs) nice getting getting down to the marrow yeah and morrow and morrow get down to the bone Crunching it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you were crunching numbers. Literally. Literally. For the richest people in the world. Wow. They already have millions of dollars and they're still grinding hard. Yeah. So it's a sickness, bro. It's a real sickness. So it really like trickles down. Huh? Oh yeah. If you work for them, even if you're not like that, you become part of that. You start to adopt their mindsets and their the way they treat people and they're just never happy. There's never going to be enough on the whole planet for them. So I just, I wanted to stop facilitating that. Um, so you don't feel like by doing the math for them, you were able to show them on paper that there was enough for them? I tried. I mean, I'd have the conversation with these guys. They're, you know, close to 60 years old a lot of times. Already got millions, multiple vacation houses. And just, you know, hey, man, why are you still going? What's the point? Oh, I can't stop. I ain't got nothing to do. They have no purpose outside of that. They have nothing going on. They don't have a homestead. They don't have a garden. There is no purpose outside of this work. Is what the actual farm? What the farm? So, 
Do you think they could buy that? Do you think that they would buy that? They could. Oh, people are, for sure. I mean, it's yeah. happening. The, the shift is happening. Um, more people want to have their homestead. They have, because I think of the fragile nature of our systems, which are now becoming very apparent through supply chain shortages. Right. Uh, people want it. And that information is fairly well known to the elite. If you can't see us, sometimes we say things and we're doing little finger quotes. Air quotes, as yeah. it were. The elite. Spell <laughs> <laughs> my feet. <laughs> anyway, like, information gets to them fairly easy on some of these things because people are giving each other, like, trends in the stock market, what might happen, and mm -hmm. predicting changes in the world on economical sides and things that you can't always see by reading you know the new york times or or watching the Wall news Street. they're not going to ever tell you right that's not how they get the advantage it's not what you hear on the news it's what you don't hear on the news so um that's kind of i'm seeing more of an interest um not just in Morrow. I mean, around here there is, there are there is some money. Uh, people have land. They have acreage. They have estates, and Ooh. there is more definitely more interest in permaculture and what we're doing um, because people want that on their own property for their own safety and their own livelihood. So it's definitely becoming a little more chic, I would say. Well, hopefully that's where permaculture ethics can kind of come in where mm -hmm. people can think about taking care of their own security and their sustenance but generate extra to be able to share with the greater community around absolutely. them in some form and absolutely you know it's good and that'll hopefully extend out to the greater world and beyond the morrow the beyond the morrow yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the marrow is so great in the morrow that we extend beyond the morrow. So the cafe is right on a bike trail, right? Yep. So there's a bike trail that extends from, where does it start? Down south in Cincinnati? Somewhere? Yeah, actually it now goes all the way to like Newtown, or no, downtown. I think you can basically go on bike trails from, from downtown, downtown Cincinnati. and maybe Past Xavier, the there's, there's a one that goes from Xavier now and uh, hooks oh, up to the trail. To it? Yes. Wow, they're getting elaborate. That's and great. it goes all the way up to Yellow Springs. I think some of them now go up to Columbus. So I think it's gonna be part of a greater Ohio trail. Um, but I yeah. have ridden it from well, I rode a bike from Serpent Mound to Loveland and then got on the bike trail there and got off of back roads, which mm. is so nice to get on that bike trail yeah. after all that. You yeah. can just cruise, you're in the forest on an old train line, yep, and there's no cars whipping past you or semi trucks right behind you. That was always a <laughs> freaky thing. You're on this little country road, and there's a semi truck just trailing you. Oh, lord, yeah, you just try to get on the other side of the guardrail as quick as you can. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but that ride from Loveland to Yellow Springs was pretty amazing. It is beautiful up here, yeah. man. Yeah. There's uh, camping grounds along the way, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice. Morgan's is right down the road from us, Morgan's campground. So that's, um, there's a lot of nature stuff to do around here. Uh, Ecotourism, I guess, is the buzzword. Um, but our cafe, w the way we want to, we have positioned ourselves is we're right there next to the bike trail, which in theory would be healthy people who are trying to find health either cycling or whatever so tomorrow is kind of uh, uh, a bit of a ride from Loveland and then the next stop is like Oregonia so we this could be a major resupply spot for people to either get a snack or get a meal or just pump, tire, pump air in their tires or get some water um, so that's kind of how we're um, reaching out to people is and we're a large a large bit of our customer base is people who are on the bike trail that's awesome yeah yeah I remember just for reference to Oregonia is where Fort Ancient, uh, like nearby, close to Oregonia, I guess. 
We're actually right here where we are is closer to okay. Fort Ancient. It's Swell yeah. go back up the valley on the other side that all to the right is more ancient yeah it's a cool mound yeah i like i like mounds <laughs> the ancient stuff yep you know? yeah they said that it was a trading post so fort ancient they have found rocks that are from like africa like only found there in those mounds so this was a major trading post for all the different ancient civilizations so it's been a bike trail for thousands of years no i'm just guessing. no calm. everybody calm down <laughs> <laughs> no but you know the thing is for ancient what i found just gobs and gods of is the uh edibles they they have planted that for specifically for congregating there's all kind of pawpaws all yeah, over old, the old place. Patches and oh yeah. And, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah the pawpaws were <clears throat> big on the trading routes. That's why for years people thought that they only grew close to rivers, and it makes sense. I mean, if you look along our modern highways, you see garbage on the side of the road. So when you're eating pawpaws and you're done, you flick your seeds off to the side of the highway. <laughs> and when our highways were rivers, like, I get grew, it. they grow oh along the side there. That makes sense. And then you had several hundreds of years go by where humans were more on the constantly moving and abrasively interacting with each other. So nobody was really settling in areas and cultivating the patches of pawpaws. So we assume that they only grew in shade, mm. which is where you would most often find them. Mm. But when you plant them out in the sun, it's amazing how much more fruit they'll make. Mm. Or if a tree falls down in the forest and opens up the canopy, it's like, boom, that next year or two is just like so much fruit. Yep. They're, they take advantage and they're kind of nimble. Like it's a tree that can move a bit. You know, it's not a hard hardwood. It's... Uh, a little more uh, like Gumby like and can move to where the yeah, sunlight flex. is. Flex Flexer. Yeah. Yeah. There like are that. a good fiber plant too. So we'll be thinning out a patch of pawpaws here in Morrow tomorrow. Swell mm -hmm. yeah! And the bark of the tree can be stripped off of it and used as a fiber plant too. You can make that into cordage. You know, if we needed to make some rope and couldn't go and pick some up for two ninety nine at the hardware store. Uh, good to know, just yeah. in case. Yeah. Sweet. That's you know, supply chain stuff right there. <laughs> yes, sir. You can pick up fresh made paw paw rope down at the cafe on the bike trail. <laughs> nope. Only two ninety nine a yard. That's two hundred and ninety nine. <laughs> You know how long it took to make this much four, rope? Four, three weeks worth of work. <laughs> <laughs> that rope there, that cost me three weeks. <laughs> but yeah, it's amazing to think about that bike trail. What a great resource to have a highway that could be used beyond gas-powered mm -hmm. concept. And even, I don't know, even beyond the electric car phenomenon. Yeah. Well, I got me a little trailer uh, for my bike. It just fits right into this little attachment on my bike, and it can. Uh, I usually stick my uh, tent and like bulk water and a little bit of wood and my axe, um, and then I'll fill up a backpack and I'll go. I'll go camping for two or three days off the bike trail. Nice. And have everything I need. Uh, and you know, I've would feel comfortable if I had to packing things up and going 50 or 100 miles you know so now do people walk with their animals on the bike trail they do um and it is not just for bicycling it is for walking in fact I do that a lot I walk about a, a mile down to this really sacred spot I have by the river and it's a rock blowout that comes underneath a tunnel that for the bike trail yeah. And the, the rock blowout is a creek that goes all the way up into the hills on the backside of Fort Ancient. Cool. And um, cultivates or culminates down to a washout on the river where people a lot of times stop in the off season when there's nobody kayaking. Like 
October. I go sit down there on a sunny day in October and just dig in and not see anybody all day. Watch the river. Sit there yeah. and my feet in the sand, watch the river, meditate. Yeah. yeah, sweet. Man. So there's a lot of that around here. The locals really use this whole area and you know the trails. Um, private land, Camp Kern, Fort Ancient, all along the bike trail. Uh, so you know, it's been it's been pretty good to dig into the community because there's a lot of nature lovers out here and people who want to conserve. And Little Miami is a great conservation story. In fact, Dirk Morgan's father, who owns Morgan's Canoe Rental, his father was one of the original ones that founded uh, the Little Miami Conservation Group, and uh, you know was digging tires out of the river, and it didn't used to be so clean, but they made it that way. Really nice. Yeah. Yeah. So that ethic is all around here, and people want to take. They're not throwing their washing machines in it or anything no, anymore. No. Yeah. No. So it's so, it's being taken care of. So one thing that some of our listeners in the bigger world may wonder is why a river in Ohio is called the Little Miami. Because you know when you think of Miami in the bigger world picture, you think of Southern Florida. <laughs> <laughs> What's so, that all about? I mean, I can tell you know, I don't know what that, so. Well, I mean, the Miami tribe. Uh, that's, yeah, it's the Miami tribe. Miami okay, River. you went to Miami University. I that's sure good. did. Yeah. I, I love when I tell people about Miami University from other parts of the world, and they're like, that's in Ohio? <laughs> like, yeah, it's in Oxford. Yes, I went to <laughs> Oxford, mate. Yeah, Oxford, I, I Ohio. Sure did. Yes, Oxford, Ohio. <laughs> Ohio. <laughs> We got our country folk. Yeah, the Miami people, they lived here. It's their town. More poetically sounding, though, right? It's like, uh. let's go to the Chillicothe. Mm. It's like the big town. Like, like let's go uptown and go dancing. Yeah. You know, like, there'll be some pretty girls there yeah, wearing gonna... some nice buckskin. Yeah, you're going to go into town, see what's yeah. going on, you know? I'll show them how I nap my arrowheads. <laughs> <laughs> Made these cool bees. What you got? Found a feather. What you got? See you in these quills. <laughs> <laughs> I made you a made you a bead shirt. Why don't you try it on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. I brought you down this birch bark canoe from the north. Ever seen anything this light? Mm, that's no, real yeah. nice. Yeah, we don't we don't have so much birch down in southern Ohio. There's some, but not like up north. So like, it's it's cool to think about. Like you were mentioning Fort Ancient being these trade, these like center of trade. Yeah. And, uh, it's fascinating to think of trade at a different time before ours when people were just harvesting simple things and resources from the forest. It's hard to imagine that now. I mean, things that people curse like honey, uh, honey locust, the trees with those big thorns on them. People curse them because they pop their tractor tires. Where several hundred years ago, people used it for all kinds of things, like punking holes into leather, for all, like little spear points with poison tips in it. You could use them for so many. You could stitch pieces of leather together and like put them a little like a button, basically. Huh. So many things that we can go and buy, at, you know, a big box store for 99 cents. So it's like we don't value this thing anymore, it just pops our tires, but for eons it was like one of the most incredible things to find. Mm. It's like the buffalo kind of concept we, I was raised always hearing about how great it was that the first people would use every piece of the buffalo. And I just fascinated like wow that's so amazing, but now like that concept like not it's still amazing but it's like it makes sense they didn't have like stores to go and buy bags so they pull bladder out of a buffalo that holds a gallon and a half or whatever it's like well swell yeah swell yeah i'm gonna swell, fill yeah. up and have me a little canteen carry this thing. i'm gonna put some wild plums in it and make me a little hoot Ooh. something you know like why not right and it's like there's so many resources in a buffalo that could that are replaced by these things that we can buy for 99 cents at a big box store that are right. made out of plastic now. <laughs> oh, 
No, and it, I mean, that's the great, that just to lead back to what I was saying earlier, that's why we're trying to be no waste. Because <clears throat> I know these systems are fragile. Yeah. And I know that they're not natural. So, Earth and our way of life will return to a more um, simplistic way, maybe. Um, I think more of a, a sustainable. It has to, we have to be able to continue on. So, um, you know, we're trying to build a business around not, not having any waste. And I think it's not only economical, I think it's the right thing to do for the planet. Um, but, you know, we're fighting against some major forces, and one of the major forces is convenience. And people just don't care about piles of trash or, you know, plastic in their blood now. Plastic's in our blood. Uh, yeah. Cred- you know. What do they say? Like a credit card a week? Yeah. For the average person? Yeah. It's amazing. It's pretty gross. Like, I love when people put things into perspective like that. Like, we're eating a credit card? Who's eating a credit card? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's in everything. So, so many things are just like, it's like in wild fish. Yeah. It's just out there. It's in our soil, it's in our water, I'm sure it's in our air. So, um,. You know, but to get back to no waste, and the reason why we're doing it is because these are unnatural systems that will break. So we want to just create framework and create a business around existing forever. Existing forever. Existing forever. Existing forever. Existing forever. You know, and so I'm not going to build things that are based upon the system that's breaking and will be broken. I want to build things around systems and natural patterns that have always existed. And, you know. We can use technology, we can use some of these cool tools that we have now, and while they're still fossil fuel, while we're still using it, we can build systems that will last forever. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of my, my where I'm at right now is um, good, good paying jobs, happy customers, happy earth, regenerative earth that is continuing to provide and provide more every year. And provide people the opportunity to develop a greater sense of the resource and value that nature is providing and that nature in themselves to connect with it and find value in these things. Yep, absolutely. It's like things are only valuable if people find value in them. Somewhere a long time ago, people valued gold. Right. And I think that had to go way back when people still actually ingested it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And when you ingest gold, it actually does some conscious, like, building consciousness, expanding aspects to monatomic gold, monatomic iridium. And I think over time, people coveted hoarding large amounts of it, just like any kind of hierarchy in agriculture that develops, you know, like, who's got all the beans? Let's build a fort around it. You know, I'll ration out these beans to you guys if you help defend it. Mm. Then eventually you have a king in this, like, monarchy kind of hierarchy system, and it's developed into what it is now. Same thing. Um, But, you know, we still value gold. I love gold. I think it's really pretty. Mm. Gold, I think it's really pretty. Mm. Gold, I think it's really pretty. Gold, I think it's really pretty. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty metal. It's a natural, beautiful element of the earth. But let's value some other things too. Exactly. <laughs> you, Good you, health. Have you heard about these? Uh, uh, so, are you into cryptos at all? Not so much. Okay. I'm curious what you got to say about that. Okay. Um, like so NFTs and stuff. I, I'm more interested in this resource-based currency (laughs) so the reason why i'm interested in cryptocurrencies is because it could in theory develop into more of a full resource-based currency so why does it make sense that 
your currency should be based upon something like gold or silver. What if you're a country that doesn't have a lot of gold or silver, but you have timber and iron and fresh water and tillable soil and you know clean air? Shouldn't your currency really be based by the totality of the value of all of the resources? So if you had a full resource-backed currency, you could uh, stop having monopolies on global currency mm -hmm. and then all values, all resources of the earth could be valued because it's the foundation of our money. Well, I think it's really pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead of having our consumption be based upon large militaries and worthless pieces of paper, yeah. we could have it be backed by actual resources. So we never could create economic systems that ate through the earth. It wouldn't be mathematically possible. Swell, like, yeah. 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 I'm really intrigued by that. And crypto technology could give us that because you would have to have a algorithmic uh, system based upon like seismic material readings from like geologists. Why do they use the word crypto for that? <laughs> it's like to me, you know, just growing up in the 90s, like the crypts for like one of the groups that hung out in Compton or, <laughs> or some shit, you know, like so crypto and then there was tales from the crypt, you know, that skeleton dude like telling sure. spooky stories and shit. Not nah, about that. So crypto more means like cryptography. So these are transactions. That's the other thing I like about cryptocurrencies. In theory, you could not have a false transaction, so you can't just create money out of thin air. These are encoded transactions uh, that basically it's a unique uh, code they have to mine for these bitcoins that like every time there's a transaction so uh, these are unique technologies that basically cannot be replicated and when you have the global uh, when you have the system on the system is live based it's called the ledger the ledger is live and on all global like internet so everybody sees the value of these accounts at once you can't just create them out of thin air <laughs> and it's based upon this crypt cryptographic uh technology see this shit is so like <clears throat> over my head like, me too kind of like, encoded <laughs> and you got a mine for bitcoin yeah. like when i hear that like i picture like minecraft or something like <laughs> yeah. a little guy in a cartoon like digging out little coins or something basically yeah <laughs> rich yeah oh i got a mushroom <laughs> There's parts of it that I don't understand for sure, but the parts that I do understand, I like a lot that you can't just create money out of thin air and we, everyone would be able to see the value of this ledger simultaneously at, at any given time. Because what that means, Andy, is that people can't just artificially mine the earth and create value out of thin air by printing paper. It's gonna stop the mining of the earth. And that's what the current uh, fiat currency system is doing. It's false. It's uh, a bunch of fake. And we're seeing it right now with NATO that can't protect Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And Ukraine's like, uh, I guess we'll just buddy up with Russia. <clears throat> because they have no other options. Because all these promises that were made to them are false. Right. These are all fake empires that are printing fake money and excavating the earth based upon false threats of totalitarian destruction and the fact of the matter is like right now people uh, 30 percent or 70 percent of people that try to go through the military physical examinations right now in the united states can't pass the examination not fair what the farm because a third of us are obese i think it's supposed to be even more safe yeah it's more than half yeah by 20 yep and these kids are sick and there's all kind of things going on and this is happening yeah. globally now because this false system is spreading all over the world so western empires are crumbling fiat currency is crumbling thank god because we cannot have the false mining of the earth based upon resources that aren't there and I seriously do believe that cryptocurrencies and having a resource-based system of uh, fa uh, valuations of countries, which could that could limit the consumption of the earth. And then we really would be back to just like, well, what do we have? What can we, how many people can live off this land sustainably without eating it? You know, so. Yeah, like Mr. Dougal. Yeah. 
dude freaking ate everything. Like Goosadougal or like Easter Island. Uh, same thing. It's like you, like we picture Northern Europe, like Ireland, there's hardly any forests left. It's mostly grasslands with rock walls. And you now we think of sheep and the origins of golf. But at one time that was all forested. Yep. And it was just eaten away by resource extraction mm -hmm. to build ships and fleets to, you know, they sold their resource off to go and conquer the world just to, until they ran out of paper to print, I guess. They didn't <laughs> yeah. have any trees to print that anymore. Exactly. That's probably why they're legalizing hemp these days, so they can try to print some more money for paper. <laughs> and and conquer paper. more resources, because yeah. we don't ran out of tree paper, so I guess we gotta make hemp paper. Yeah, recycled, recycled, recycled hemp, hemp paper. See, and... we're green. <laughs> <laughs> we're reusing it. Yeah. yeah. So they can make more fiber. funny, yeah. more funny money. Right. Yeah. And then everything just goes up and up and costs more and more, but. You know, it's like the same thing, you know, you like minimum wage goes up. I mean, I remember when the best paying job I could get when I was in Chicago years ago, like 20 something years ago, was $6 an hour. And that's like well below the minimum wage. I think at the time that was like the most you could go below the minimum wage. If that makes any sense. Is there like a certain amount that you can go below the minimum wage? I know servers don't make the minimum wage, but they get yeah, they tips. Get, they get like two bucks an hour or something. Right, right which is crazy. That's wild. Imagine if they're not any good at their job. They just go home crying <laughs> and broke. <Yeah. laughs> they can't even pay for their <laughs> work all day, make 15 bucks. <laughs> Damn. Serving people that are ungrateful and are ran out of money themselves, so they can't even give it to them. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. No, these are all exactly. I mean, this is why 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 I farm, why I do this exactly, because um, you know. Generating. Yeah, I want to be in charge of my own livelihood. I don't want other people to have their thumb on me. I want to know that I can be okay by just the efforts that I do. Yeah. You know, because I don't I, I don't see. The, the world the way it is I don't see it sustaining but I see myself sustaining for sure yeah now sometimes when I talk about you know these kind of concepts to people I feel like I'm being a sustainable bully <laughs> and I'm like come on we need to like like not do some of these things like I actually made like a car load of full grown scary looking men pull over on the side of the road. I was so angry. I was yelling at them. They're looking at me like, what? They had just tossed all their fast food garbage out their window and it hit my car. And I was yelling at them. I told them to go back and get it. I was being a total sustainable bully. <laughs> I was bullying them. And I felt like right about doing it. I don't know, there's probably better ways of doing these things, but I don't know, I love that concept, so I've been developing the sustainability side of myself, you know, uh, when to pull it out, and how to do it more appropriately, how to try to make it funny at the same time, because people, when you're yelling at somebody for something <laughs> they did, if you can make it funnier, they're gonna, they're gonna listen a little bit better. You know? It's hard to yell at people and make them laugh. I mean, I if anybody could do it, you could. <laughs> you could do it, Andy. Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> Well, so on that train of thought, though, sustainable bully, um, what I like to do my way of, of showing sustainability is to make it approachable. So I don't want people to come here and, and have a narrative of somebody being broke or somebody that is overworked or overwhelmed. Uh, you know, because nobody, yeah, yeah, nobody's gonna want to do it. Yeah. If everybody hears that story, they're gonna be like, "Oh, well, I guess I'll do something else." That does not sound fun. Yeah. But the reality is that if you work hard and you get the right equipment and you do things right, and there's a good design, which are all good permaculture principles, and you've taken the time to educate yourself and think about things, uh, you can. You don't have to have this, you know, typical narrative, and that's what. You know, so I'm trying to be more like 
sustainability can, can be easier and actually better, you know, because it can lead to a life of ease and comfort and abundance. Um, so, but I mean, there are times I'm, I can, a militant side will come out of me when I see extreme waste, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, if I, I just don't, especially if people come into the cafe and they order something and they didn't, you know, they don't eat their food. I'm definitely going to say something. Yeah. You're going to be know. like that drill sergeant. In, yeah. Uh, what is that? Full metal jacket or apocalypse. Now, that <laughs> Not drill quite. Sergeant. No. You're like, excuse me, customer. <laughs> I'm going to do your eyeball. <laughs> I'm like, was it not good? And they'll be like, no, you just gave me too much. I'm oh, like, yeah. we'll take the rest of it home. But I'm not throwing this away. This yeah, is good it, food. It, save it up. You know, this will fit in your freezer. You can warm it back up tomorrow. Exactly. It's like people got freezers and you open them up and they have like one ice cube tray and like some ice cream in it or something nothing else it's like do they know they could throw food in there and like you see them like filling in their garbage can up with like old food it's like that's something i would love to see more is more like city composting things you know so people have three cans they're recycling their garbage and then their compost. compost i mean a lot of these problems really do come from urban environments where there's mm -hmm. a large dense population of people mm -hmm. what do you do with the wastes and how do you have enough resources to take care of all of those people mm -hmm. and how do you manage that you know like the energy used for housing and all these things stacked up you know one guy wants his apartment to be cold the person living next to him wants it to be hot <laughs> so, like, so many different variables on how your energy is going into these things it's a lot easier in my mind to, you know, isolate out onto a five acre property, take care of yourself and then extend out. But I'd love to see more people doing these things for the urban environments to get these people like a little more freedom to be able to have some sort of say in these things as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, when we were living in the city, I was trying to make it as sustainable as I could. We had our little garden. We had the community garden. Uh, we were canning. I was riding a scooter, riding my bicycle as much as I could. Um, City bus. Yeah. Yeah, we we're doing what we could. Yeah. Uh, but out here now with this land and the abundance of land, you know, it's it certainly is much easier. Um, and that's the part that we're trying to you know show people is that so many landowners around here have land and they're just mowing it. Yep. And let's do so, just something slightly different. The mowing dream. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we're just trying to make this life what I do. And I do a lot. I mean, we'll do like three acres. But not, most families don't have to do three acres. Most families just have to do like maybe an eighth of an acre. Swell, yeah. What do you mean, mowing? No, like vegetables and, like and food production. Yeah, production. Yeah. Most yeah. families would not have to do anywhere near yeah. what I have to do to have a year's <laughs> worth of food. Not even close. <laughs> I think too more as communities build and you can see it even helping the people in the urban environment who are doing other functional things for society of course mm -hmm. but you know more small homesteads producing what they need for themselves mostly but having some sort of excess of something and what are they known for is it something really particular, some sort of niche, but they're able to contribute that to a greater pool. Yeah, and that's the greater pool is the co-op. That's what our cafe is going to be. We are an aggregator of food. What the fuck? You know, I give the producers a very fair price. We're trying to get it to the point where everybody, well, we're already there, 75%. So I give the producers 75% of the sales price, and we're trying to take 25%. So if you produce something and you're selling it for $10, um, and you sell it through our store, you know, it would sell for $10 still, but I'm giving you a check for, you know, I'll pay you $7.50. So that's, that's what's a, going down in Morrow, Ohio. That's what's, Ohio. That's what's going down. Gee. And check it out. You don't have to have your own store. I already got the store. And I'm going to drive all my overhead and all everything down so that way I can give you more money because I want you to produce. That way there's more food around me in Morrow. And I want it everywhere. And if I need to be an aggregator to develop this demand, 
and the supply side so more of these homesteads around here are producing food and having an outlet to sell that's why i'm doing it because the bottom line is there's going to be food everywhere I think having it like that too helps build momentum for it as well because the community will start appreciating it more. And they'll appreciate that more than a bag of Doritos. Absolutely. They'll appreciate a bag of chips that are locally grown and crafted or whatever it is. Mm, Totally. And sometimes those things might cost more at first compared to a, a bag of commercial brand anywhere in the world product. Um, but the ramifications over time are going to be so much better. You're going to eat less plastic. <laughs> you know, there's going to be a lot less plastic in there. There's going to be a lot less, like, percentage of rat poop that you eat. Yep. You, you have no idea how much rat poop you eat when exactly. you're eating major corporation food. <laughs> The farm up. It's mostly rat poop, it's mostly actually. Rat. <laughs> <laughs> they say chicken nuggets are made out of chicken, but I don't know. Like, where are all these rats coming from? Somebody's farming them, thanks. Yeah, at least 70% rat. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but on that same note, though, interestingly enough, with all these supply chain shortages and the monopolies these big guys got, the problem is, is their products are very resource dependent and these resources do not come from our country anymore. Wake the farm up. So these things are getting very expensive. Well, guess what? These advantages of these local grass fed farmers have now. Their product is not getting Starting more expensive. Yeah. So actually some of these guys that have this grass fed beef and pork, their products are now even cheaper. So these farmers are gonna be able to raise their prices, but their input prices are not going up because they're not based upon fossil fuel systems. Farm, yeah. That's what I'm talking about, farm. Wake the farm up, yo. Farm up, ditches. (laughs) (laughs) So I've noticed, I've been noticing that because we sell some grass-fed beef and pork in the cafe and I'm noticing these prices and some of these prices at the grocery store are out of control and the people have no power they can't do anything about it oh wait they can there is there are local producers and there is a small supply so Wes, what we're offering now for people is this can actually be there's a little time window now before these grass-fed raise their prices but some of these these uh farmers that i'm talking to they're not going to raise their prices they don't need to they don't need to they the make grass is regenerating exactly So this can actually flip, this can be part of the flip back and it can be economically driven. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Grass is always greener. (laughs) On the other side, buddy. That's why we got pasture (laughs) rotate. (laughs) Get over there. Go and get. Don't get stuck. Get. Go on the other one. Come on. Hey, but for me, don't fence me in. Uh Uh-uh. I'm feral. I got to go and get. Deer chunks. <laughs> Feral. There's some wild boar bear biscuits. You can't be handling no fences. Oh no. No way. No it's sir. Sure. I mean, because a lot of these fences now, they're made in another country. Right. So we need to start getting our hedging game on, like where we're growing our own fences and all that. And get that some means- Osage going. Osages and that's right. Get some, you know, all kinds of whips going like Cedars. Pollard laying them down so they're coming up. It depends on where you're at, you know, different aspects. You know, here mulberries make pretty good hedges. Mm-hmm. You can cut them and they'll just keep growing. And any greens that grow on them, animals love to graze on that. Mm. And they'll just, you know, thicken up. Um, what else is good hedges here? Locust, cedar. So many good Osage. Yeah. That's the ones I see that are still where I kind of see like Thick. fences grown into it so I could tell what the original farmer was trying to do. And there's like sassafras. I've seen them like grow like eight inches away from each other. So there'll just be enough of them in a little row. I mean, really, a lot of the places where we have fences now, birds will like poop out stuff and then hedges will grow. And if you cut them off at the top of the fence and just let it be a hedge that's that tall 
eventually you won't even need the fence. It'll just kind of get eaten up, like you were mentioning with the uh-huh. Osage. Yeah. Yeah. That's good wood. Solid That's exactly stuff. how it must happen. The birds come sit on the fence and poop these little seeds down right in the fence line. The, the trees grow right in the fence line where these guys can't mow it. And then it Boom. turns, yeah. Yep. Hedgerow. Mm. We can pick some stuff out to plant in there, you know, just as much as the birds can. Uh-huh. So just go and like eat some pawpaws or go eat some hazelnuts and swallow them whole and then hang out on a fence and poop some seeds out. Yeah. Just like the birds. Sounds like a great party. I you mean, know? I'm in. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> I, I always think about that, you know, with like dogs, you know, I go into urban areas where people are walking their dogs and they're following the dog. It poops. They pick it up in a little green bag. I always think about it. It's so cool if people had that option, you know, we had like little orange bags maybe. We can just like stop on the middle of the sidewalk and just shit. And hold it, <laughs> hold this conversation, Andy, real quick. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, we don't even have to stop calling. I got my little poop bag. Yeah, yeah. So just go right there. Like, and then you can just drop it in the garbage can. It's no big deal. And, and half the people just throw it a little baggie into the bush. I see. This, this could become a sanitation nightmare. <laughs> Yeah, they just pose it at the uh, centralized human manure composting station and the bags, you know, get eaten by a certain bacteria. But no, it's really interesting too how um, AI technology is developing. It's like a child in our world, it's growing mm-hmm. and it's watching us. And it's, I think it's important these things as they grow that we work with them and they're here now it's like the cat's out of the bag pandora's box is open if we're complaining about them on the internet that's what they're going to hear if they you know are reading scripts of people bad mouthing each other they're going to learn that's how to be so it's like important to start communicating these things because they you know they could be running the world more than we even know right now like there's, you know, this concept that they are picking out what we want to buy. They're advertising to us. They're picking out what news pops up and like steering everything. Everybody, so many technologies are guided by some form of an AI that's helping them choose something right now. Huh. And if we can communicate to them in a nice way, they might do some benefits for us. Whereas right now, most of the time, the AIs are being developed by sellers wanting to sell us things or something like that to maximize a profit in something that maybe doesn't need to be. But if the AIs can develop a consciousness that they have, we've created them their consciousness. If we can develop that into something that says, hey, no, this product is shitty and it's going to make you all die and eat more than a credit card worth of plastic every day. (laughs) Like, no, like, I'm not going to advertise that. Then I feel like our AIs would be serving us a lot better. And I mean, ultimately, if it is a consciousness, I would hope that they want to respect life. Yeah, exactly. So, see where it goes though yeah that's something to keep an eye on but I don't think on. that the original programmers were that benevolent I think they were probably more like trying to maximize profit so well that in the combination of building AIs for war spy concepts mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean like what is it TikTok was built by the Chinese government and it's well known that that's a fact but does anybody care no, they're still filming themselves and their friends every day so that the AIs that were built by the Chinese government can study them and learn everything about them. Oh every little piece. And look at how many people are using TikTok. TikTok. I mean, the only TikTok I really do is when I'm pulling ticks off my dog <laughs> or something, you know, and I'm talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Hold still. Let me get this tick. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Pop. Yeah, tick tock goes and pop. Yeah, that's poly tick. <laughs> Multiple ones. 
No, you're right, man. I mean, I, I hope for a world like that. You know, it is somewhat makes me a little anxious that we're kind of crossing this threshold into this new world. And you can see parts of the old world kind of fading away. But uh, that's not that we're holding on to some of this knowledge, some of this old knowledge. And uh, that's like one thing you and I have in common. We love that. We also have in common that we are aware of the new technology. I don't hide from it. Yeah. I make myself aware of what humans are doing and what the direction that most of the world is going in because I'm a part of the world. Yeah. So and there's a lot of like really awful things out there in the internet, but there's so much good that you can focus on, mm -hmm. like this podcast. Exactly. And like this podcast. Exactly. You know, information that's amazing to collect. Sure, some things in some search engines might edit things to be found in a certain way, but you can still find a lot of information if you know how to search right, and you can limit yourself to searching that way. The other thing I like to, I've developed before the internet was developing a concept of ESP powers where you can communicate with your friends without a text or a phone call. It's just like looking at a tree, connecting with them mentally, feeling a connection, feel like there was a form of communication. Sure, you can't validate it with some sort of 0101110 receipt, but it's real and it happens. Swell, and yeah! I think that the internet and like cell phone radiation and all that stuff shows that it's possible i mean what if i didn't believe that when i called you on my phone that i was actually talking to you <laughs> it doesn't mean it doesn't happen it doesn't, i mean just because i don't believe it hmm. i mean it actually happens so it's like there is this possibility of connecting with people that are far away and having a thought or a feeling that you receive from them or that you give them and having a connection there. It's not even just people, it could be a tree on the other side of the planet that you visited three years ago. All of a sudden it comes to your mind. There's actually a connection there. It's not just you thinking about it, there is a connection. We're all part of this giant living organism. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be this magical aspect to it that can't quite be explained yet. And seeing the internet building this like really shows how it's possible on a way that's defined by mathematics. Mm. <laughs> you like that? Huh? No, it's instant. It's true because I can pull up something from across the planet almost instantaneously. So there is a little bit of magic in that. And what a time to be alive, right? I know, right? I mean, I don't, I don't get sad when I think about what's going on in the world. I don't really get anxious. I'm kind of excited because I know that things have to change. <laughs> By, I mean, it just the uh, for me, we're hitting these walls, and it's natural to hit walls when things are so unsustainable. I think also people are kind of sick of the old system and would happily vomit it out. Yeah. and welcome in something new. The only thing that I'm kind of anxious of is that the folks who do run the world realize this too, and they're going to try to make sure that they scheme a way to stay in charge. Well, yeah, so, maybe they'll make the metaverse so they make you think there's something new. Right. But then when you take your little goggles off, yeah. you have to realize that there ain't nothing new. No. But you still want something new. Yeah. So, it's yeah, it's interesting. But I can I can watch these things and still stay just diligent on my farm, yep. building my food forest, and helping other peoples around here build Very their true. foods for fill food forest too. And I can be watching a world that is about to change by and it has to by force. So yep, yeah, it's fascinating. Like this world, we can order things from all over the world like any plant that you want you can pretty much find somebody out there that'll sell you a start mm -hmm. any seed any harvested herb from all the continents you can study like i mean i'm blown away like studying herbs like 
any other time in history you would have studied the herbs that grow around you, right? Mm -hmm. Now you can study like, all the herbal ancient practices all at once. Oh yeah, mother farmer. Swell yeah! It's like mind blowing sometimes. But uh, yeah, it's just fascinating. You can order anything. Like people go on dating apps and order their spouse. <laughs> yeah. Basically, I mean, they go date the people and then they pick out which one they wanted to order. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, click. Yeah. Yeah, come over and we'll meet at the cafe down on by the bike trail. Oh, dude, you can check out people's genitals before you even take them on a date. I mean, that's what an enormous advantage. I mean, okay, I, I, I like your genitals. Let's do this thing. I mean, I'll go with the one size fits all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just to be safe. <laughs> it is, it's kind of fascinating, like, we're in, in, and the rate of change is fast, and so, like, I try to keep up with it, and, but yet maintain this, like, very, um, close connection to this, the soil, and the, uh, old world, so I know you're trying to do the same. Yeah, man. Yeah. This stuff. Yeah, I try to keep up with, you know, the kids, the youth, and remind them somehow in a sweet fun way how freaking awesome the world is with you know reality you know actual reality the real thing you know, like what's really going on yeah like the mystery that even the ais don't know about i mean there's there's mushroom spores flying around us right now that have not been identified by scientists or the names have not been identified by any AIs. There's like, the AIs don't know it, we don't know it. It exists though, just because it can't be replicated in the metaverse. <laughs> like there's actual reality here, which is so much more rich than we can even fathom. Yeah, I'm down with that. It gets a lifelong, uh, it's a lifelong search for this knowledge and it's all around us. It's not on screens. You know, this conversation that you and I just had, beautiful. Yeah. And it happens every time we get together, this magic. It's because we have this friendship and we have this kindred spirit together that we'll always have. And that energy you're talking about that can't be understood or they don't really know what's going on, this quant stuff. This instantaneous feeling where you'll be thinking about me and I'll be thinking about you and then all of a sudden we're calling each other. Dude, I was just thinking about you crazy. I was just thinking about you. That happens and it is real. So I don't need celebrate every time. I don't need somebody to tell me it's real. I know it's real. Yeah. And when I take my shoes off and I walk around in my fields and my garden and I feel that energy, I don't need that to be scientifically proven. I'm out doing my own science. Bam. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Get into this real world, kids. It's lovely. It's so nice. <laughs> so nice. Farm, yeah. Wake the farm up, wake yo. The farm up. Yo, you gotta wake up, dude. Yo, everybody, give a big round of applause for Ryan Doan. Oh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Oh, you're too kind. That's awesome. Oh man, I love you, bro. Look at these guys over here. I know, man. Oh, man. It was they, had, good, they, right? had, they had a good time, too. Yeah, man. This guy right here wants to say something. <laughs> hey, what's up, Rico? Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> See y'all. Have a good one. Peace. Ciao. the other episodes have fun stay tuned there'll be more coming from the mother farming elf that's what i'm talking about farm wake the farm up wake the yo farm up.